Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated Economist here. So, got a few articles I want to share with you guys talking about the bond market. This is something that I have said for quite a while now that we have to keep a close eye on the things that are happening within the debt market, especially sovereign debt. I think that's going to be the critical the critical component inside of the great financial crisis that is going to come. It's going to be the greatest financial crisis. I mean, people want to look back at 2008 as a great financial crisis. They ain't seen nothing yet when it comes to a sovereign debt crisis that's going to come. And it's going to be drugged down along with the corporate debt market. So when you have sovereign nations failing and you have corporations failing, you have the whole world failing at that point. Now you have individuals who carry a lot of debt, but when you have sovereign nations and corporations failing, I mean, this is the jobs, this is the livelihoods, this is the protection, this is the shipping channels, this is everything that our lives revolve around. So when this fails, everything fails. There, it's, it's not like, oh yeah, it sucks for them corporations. No, it sucks for everybody, every single person. So what I find really interesting though, is how like China was the leader of, of the situation. They got COVID first, they locked down first, they opened up first, they started reducing their stimulus first, they started having issues with default first, they started stimulating again first. So everything that is going on in the world started in China first. I mean, it's just the way it's going down. Now we look at what happened when China started reeling in the irrational exuberance, when they started doing what the Federal Reserve is trying to do right now. When they started lowering the interest, or I'm sorry, started raising the interest rates and bringing in that stimulus, like trying to be less accommodating to the economy, corporations started to fail. And Evergrande was a major teller of the whole economy going on over there because Evergrande is the property developer. In fact, they're the world's largest property developer if I, if I got it right. And their debt was in bad shape. So a lot of people have a hard time trying to understand like how it is that their debt was losing value. When you buy a bond from one of these corporations, that bond has a price tag on it, how much you paid for it. Well, that price can change. It can go up or down. And what happened with Evergrande is they're like, hey, we're going to have a hard time paying the bondholders the interest payment plus the principal because we're going broke. The price of that bond started falling dramatically as nobody really wanted to buy this thing. Some investors picked them up because of the mass media attention that was brought to it and some of the rumors that were put out there into the media saying that Evergrande was going to be saved or that it was a safe investment or somehow that they weren't going to default. And a lot of investors jumped in to this Evergrande corporate debt thinking that pretty much that they were gonna survive. Well, they're not, they're defaulting. And people are saying they're getting the letters now from the processors of those bond payments saying that, hey, Evergrande's, they're done. They're like, they're out of business. You're not gonna get paid anything. So don't count on your money. And this is what a lot of these bondholders are now getting from, as far as a letter from, from Evergrande in the, in the processors of their bond payments. So Evergrande's like out of it, right? They're done. They're defaulting. And everybody who holds their debt, they're going to fail. So, or, well, I don't know if they're going to fail, but they're going to fail to get their money back anyway. So we look over here at the United States and what's happening? Well, investors are diving into corporate debt right after the Federal Reserve says, hey, we're going to reel in the irrational exuberance. Very similar in a way that Evergrande happened in China. Like the investors looked at Evergrande saying, hey, we have an issue here, but the news said, hey, Evergrande's gonna be saved, so the investors poured into it. Well, look here in the United States, they're jumping into corporate debt. It's, it's a scary scenario that's gonna happen from this. Now, everybody is under this idea that the Federal Reserve is going to raise interest rates, and they are going to raise interest rates. The only problem with raising interest rates is it starts really impacting the economy on a very dramatic scale. So right now, the Federal Reserve has their Fed funds rate just under 1%. They're like, I don't know, 0.8 or something like that percent. They're going to try and get that up to around the 2% mark. So you have a couple of more interest rate hikes that are going to come, right? I think they've promised like two 50 point interest rate hikes, which means like another percentage. So we're going to be right around that 2% Fed funds level when the Federal Reserve is saying, okay, now we're going to be data, uh, 
how, how do they use the word uh, data dependent? That was that was the word that they used before, and they're going to go data dependent on whether or not they should continue to impact the economy by lifting up interest rates. Here's the thing. They won't need to raise interest rates at that point. They can put the market perception out there that says, hey, we're gonna hold off on raising interest rates right now because we're not sure if raising interest rates is quite what the economy needs at this point, right? So they can put this perception out there that people are like, whoa, the Federal Reserve no longer wants to raise interest rates. They've stalled out on their interest rate hikes. However, they're not gonna be stalling out on the lifting of interest rates because they're gonna to continue to unwind their balance sheet. Now take a look at the Federal Reserve document that I found, I think it was posted on June 3rd, so it was just the other day. And they're talking about how it is that they can use balance sheet reduction. This is the treasuries and mortgage-backed securities that they purchased during the quantitative easing. They talk about how it is that they can use all these purchases, this giant balance sheet that they've swelled up to what nine trillion dollars or some some crazy number but they talk about how it is that reducing this balance sheet will have the same impact on the economy as lifting interest rates think about that for a second look at the document that i leave down in the description two and a half trillion dollar reduction in the balance sheet is the same as a 50 point increase in in the fed funds level if i got that right so think about it. When they go and put the news out there, hey, we're done lifting interest rates. The economy can't really handle any higher interest rates. You know, it's really, you know, this, this Fed funds level at the level, you know, being up at this level is just too much. And everybody in the market is going to be like, whoa, the Federal Reserve is reverse course. They're, they're going the other direction, but they're going to continue to unwind their balance sheet. And that'll have the same impact as if they were continuing to lift interest rates. It's going to happen, guys. This stuff... Anything that the Federal Reserve comes out in states, if they're on any kind of mainstream media, if you find an, an article or anything out there that is a Federal Reserve statement, like they like one of the Fed governors came out and did an interview or you know, something of that nature, that information is meant to direct the markets. Think about that. When you get that information, take that information in as that as that concept that this is meant to guide me it's not necessarily the information that is needed for me to make a decision on but it's an information that's going to guide me now when they and because it's going to be important when they come to stalling out the lifting of interest rates when they say hey we can't really lift interest rates anymore from here because it's going to impact the economy that's what they're going to say the market's going to interpret that as they've stalled out on their rate increases but they're going to continue to unwind their balance sheet knowing that that's going to be the same as the equivalent as if they had raised interest rates. That's going to be the important part of this thing. So remember that. And I'm going to leave a link down in the description to that. So go check it out. I don't know what else to add. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.